since the uh, mid 70s i have been involved in a study of uh, women and the women in islam and i was one of the first uh, to develop the discipline of feminist theology in islam which which means that i started looking at um, the quranic texts that talk about women and women's issues uh, from the perspective of uh, from a non patriarchal perspective because uh, you know we have to differentiate between the quranic text which is in classical arabic and the interpretation of the text because the interpretation of the text has been done by many people and through the ages but most of these men almost all of these uh, interpretations have been done by men and so there is a lot of patriarchal uh, thinking that has become incorporated in the interpretation the position and status of women in islam as given by the quran and the holy prophet is something i'll talk to you about uh, no way does the quran belittle uh, the position of women or make them secondary to men uh and you have to understand that in a tribal society which existed before the revelation of the quran and before the advent of prophet muhammad like in all other societies you look at christian societies or jewish jewish societies you find that women had absolutely no status on their own right they actually were a property of the man a property of the father the property of the husband and the property of uh, you know in case these people died the property of the male heirs that uh, they were sort of inherited as part of property uh, neither did they have any equivalent rights to marriage because many times they were just used as concubines and uh, neither did they have uh, you know any position if they wanted to leave the husband if there was a sort of a because they didn't even imagine that such a thing was possible now in arabia i'd like you to know that when the prophet uh, when the prophet muhammad was born and when he began to teach he was the first feminist that islam had he was the first feminist of islam because he stood up for the rights of the underprivileged and women be- belong to the category of one of the categories of the underprivileged i was looking at the quranic texts and i i organized them in sort of subject wise topic wise like uh, what does the quran say about women the creation of women what does the quran say about women in the context of marriage in divorce inheritance uh what does the quran say about um uh, women in the context of motherhood and you know other rights uh, uh in terms of um, women as persons women as leaders women as uh, witnesses and so on so i was sort of doing a systematic study of different uh, aspects of life and i became very convinced during that one decade the first decade of my study that the quran doesn't discriminate against women in fact it's very protective of the rights of women just like the bible is very protective of the rights of the marginalized people you know the 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 widow the orphan the slaves and women in that the pre in in pre islamic society in which islam was born were very very disadvantaged they didn't even have the right to life because they had female infanticide and they they were bought and sold and so on so in given the context of that society uh you know i i saw how many rights were given and what was the attitude and i became very convinced that you know there is no there's no discrimination in in uh toward women and this is a real challenge now because you see we've gone through these different stages first women just not knowing and a vast majority of women don't know their rights but even when women know their rights not being able to stand up for them because the price is very high you know so we are going through all of these these kinds of struggles at this moment